This is the Win Amp. Follow my face. Yeah. Sweet. Previously, with all the other iterations of this particular streamer, there has not been a built in amp before. Until now. I mean, yes, it's been out for quite some time now, but uh, now it's my turn to review it. Yay! So, to start off, let's just go ahead and see what's in the box, right? It's a white box. According to this little diagram here, it comes with stuff. I like when things come with stuff. Is there tape? Dang it. <laughs> okay, it just slides off. Ooh. Power cable. <laughs> it freaked out because I was covering up my face. And here, remote. This says HDMI, RCA, and optical cables. Let's see if it's true. Pretty cool looking HDMI cable. Uh, nice and braided, as you can see. Hopefully, this is getting in the shot. <laughs> optical cable. Uh oh. Ah! RCA cable. Uh, the one that came with the Wim Pro Plus were not as nice. They were still great. They did the job, but I think they stepped it up a little bit with these RCA cables. And the streamer slash amp itself. Oh, let's not forget it's got some literature, of course. Quick start guide. Let's get this out of the way. All right, so these have a little bit of adhesive there. And that's protective sleeve. Okay. Front looks very sleek, very minimalistic. It's got that big old knob on the front. Yeah, which you can push in so you can play and pause. These volume LED lights, so you can tell how loud it is, but also the power LED. The back also looks very nice. You got your speaker terminals here, your analog audio inputs right here, subwoofer output right here, Optical input right here. Ethernet port for more reliable internet connection. USB power cable inlet, last but not least, HDMI. And out of all the WIM products, you can only find the HDMI input on the WIM amp. I also just saw that there's some cows on the adjacent lot. So uh, I'll just get a shot of some cows while I show you some... All right, just a couple things I want to go over as far as the design aspect is compared to the Wim Pro and the Wim Pro Plus. I've got the Wim Pro Plus right here. Um, I've got, <laughs> I took some painter's tape and put a plus on it because it looks virtually identical to the Wim Pro. So just to let me know that this is the plus and not the regular Pro, that's why I put this plus on here. And now since this is a streamer only without an amp inside, it's got this little tiny USB-C port for the power cable. And the power cable isn't that long. So that was kind of one of my gripes with um, reviewing the WinPro and the WinPro Plus. So I kind of had to get creative in placing this where I wanted to, or I was just forced to place it where I didn't want to because the power cord wasn't long enough. But I do appreciate how the WIM amp since it's more robust and since it has an amp inside, you're going to need a better power cable. So I do like how this is more of like your standard power cable inlet and the power cable itself is much longer. But also, as you can see here, there are these heat sinks on three sides, uh, not this side, but I do like that kind of tapered look to it. And also because it has an amp inside, this is the first WIM product that has a subwoofer out because I do like to add just a touch of low end to my music, especially if I'm listening to a particular artist that has, you know, kind of bass heavy tracks. But another thing I want to point out, and this is true for all WIM products, uh, maybe not the WIM Mini, I haven't actually reviewed the WIM Mini. They're, they're matte. This is matte black. This is like this matte silver. So because it's matte, I mean, I've been touching this all over and look, 
virtually no fingerprints. But yeah, I can't stand fingerprint magnet products. And this is not one of them. You could touch this as much as you want with your greasy fingers like mine, and, and it looks the same as when you took it out of the box. It's really cool. But another reason that I really like how long the power cord is, is because I typically review hi-fi equipment here in my living room, because this is actually a vintage record player that my wife got for my grandma so many years ago. So yeah, this opens up and there's a turntable right here. But in the past, if I was reviewing a piece of hi-fi equipment, I would typically have to put them here, like streamer here, amp here, or integrated amp on here to be able to reach down to the outlet behind it. But since the WIM amp is so small in comparison to the other products I've reviewed in the past, I can put it up here and it'll reach down all the way to the outlet down there, which is great because I can review this, but also if my wife decides to come home tonight and she wants to listen to a record, she can. So it's just the little things, you know, having a long power cord. All right, so let's hook it up. Okay. I go into more detail about the WIM app uh, in the WIM Pro review that you can see here. Uh, but let's just dive in a little bit because I bet there's probably a subtle differences because it's an amp and not just a streamer. So let's check it out. Yes, I would like to set it up. Connecting to Mordor, yay! A noise! Oh no, there's a device update, of course. Okay, obviously I will not force you to watch this download and install the update in real time. Okay, I did in fact decide to just stop the recording. So let's continue, done. Let's just name it Wim Amp. Next, put the remote into pairing mode. Please insert two AAA batteries. Yes, yeah, I know they're not included. Into the remote from the back before use. Put the remote into pairing mode by pressing and holding source and mute for two or more seconds. Okay, hey, pair your remote. That remote wasn't 30 seconds. Successfully paired. <gasps> Did you hear that? Enable Chromecast audio, work with Alexa, add to Apple Home. Let's do Chromecast. Wimamp is up to date. You can now play Apple's AIFF audio tracks directly from a USB disc on your Wimamp. Ooh, like a USB flash drive, that's cool. Choose whether your TV can wake your WIM amp with this option. I guess maybe it didn't have CEC controls before, but now it does. So far it looks like just the same stuff. EQ, audio settings. So this is where you would select your different sources. EQ, wow. You've got a graphic EQ that has fixed frequencies where you can boost or cut. Or if you wanna get real crazy, you also have a parametric EQ to choose from. So you can choose which frequency you're dealing with. Although you can see from this graph, you only have four parameters that you can actually adjust. Whereas the graphic EQ has 10 frequency bands that you can adjust. But honestly, that's one of the really cool things about WIM products is that it has this graphic and parametric EQ in the app. There are some streamers that I've reviewed in the past that don't have an EQ whatsoever, but no room is alike. So a streamer or streamer plus amp, like the WIM amp, you gotta have some sort of DSP involved to be able to dial in your speakers to your space so they are sounding the best they can possibly sound. So kudos to you, WIM, because being able to adjust any EQ is a must, really. Yeah, other than that, everything else is the same. Cool. All right, so Kanye West album Vultures just dropped a few days ago, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and listen to that. So I listened to Kanye yesterday and uh, there was definitely some distortion that I was hearing, but since it's an album that I'm not familiar with, it's totally new, it just came out. Maybe that was Kanye's artistic intention. 
um, to add a little distortion to certain points, um, even some like phasing issues that I was hearing. So I'm gonna listen to my two go-tos right now for just fidelity and arrangement, instrument separation, and just overall goodness <laughs> of quality. And that is one, Change the World by Eric Clapton, and two, Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls. All right, so I just listened to Iris. I just listened to Change the World. Um, Change the World actually sounded pretty darn good. The bass came through pretty cleanly. It did seem like maybe there was just a tiny, tiny bit of distortion, but the guitars, the, the snare, the backup vocals during the chorus, those all seem to be pretty darn clear. I guess the only other thing that I might say is that it kind of sounded a bit flat compared to other amplifiers that were, you know, a lot more expensive. But again, 60 watts per channel isn't nothing. So when I turned it up pretty loud, it was doing pretty good. I was pretty surprised that it was able to handle volumes that were kind of getting a little bit too loud even for myself. So yeah, low level, normal, and loud listening. Uh, with the song Change the World, it was pretty good. Iris, on the other hand, that was a different story. That was where I definitely heard some distortion, particularly in the guitars a little bit. And like Change the World, Iris also sounded a bit flat, as if all the people in the band were standing in a straight line, you know, just kind of all playing right there, instead of, you know, the drums being a little bit further behind, the vocals coming through a little bit more crisply, the guitars and the mandolin sounding like they're about midway between the vocals and the drums. None of that. I just, it just kind of sounded like they were all together in the same plane. But this time when I turned it up loud, uh, you know, to the point where even I was cringing a little bit because I don't normally listen to music that loud. Yeah, I could definitely hear some distortion. And just like with Change the World, the, the bass guitar had a little bit of distortion. Same thing with Iris. Uh, in that particular song, they have a stand-up bass. And it just didn't sound like it was coming out as buttery smooth as I had heard previously. So Change the World sounded pretty good. Iris, not that great at least in comparison to what I've heard before, to what I expect to hear, because those are my go-to songs. That's also why I use the Aperion Audio Veris V8B bookshelf speakers, because they can handle a lot of power, up to 300 watts. But the recommended wattage on the website for the Veris speakers is, I think, 20 to 150. So it's not like the Wimamp just is not supposed to drive those speakers. It certainly can, and it certainly did. But looking back on it, since I heard a bit of distortion with Iris, that makes me wonder if I indeed heard some distortion with the Kanye album yesterday, Vultures. But there is one other thing that I've been meaning to test out with this system, and that is to add a subwoofer to the mix. Because what's really cool about the Wim Home Amp is that when you do connect a subwoofer to it, it automatically now brings up this bass management page which is really cool. So let's go check it out. Right now I have the Force Field 30 subwoofer connected to my uh, little alt theater system that's currently in my living room. So I'm gonna take this and put it over by the turntable so we can connect this. Okay, so now that we got a subwoofer connected, let's go into the settings and see what we got going on. Subwoofer. Sub output on, haha. -ha. Plus or minus 15 decibels is the range you can adjust as far as the volume is concerned. And here you can adjust the crossover frequency as well. It defaults to 80 Hertz. And then you can also adjust the phase if it needs to be 180 degrees or zero degrees. And that's all you need really. Cool. So an interesting turn of events. I was just about to pull up Vultures again by Kanye West and Ty Dolla Sign, but uh, it's not there. <laughs> um, I just read an article on msn.com that said Vultures 1 was being pulled from Apple Music and Spotify, I think. Thanks, Kanye. Oh well, I guess I'll just go to some other bass heavy tracks. Also, the Wim Amp has a Bluetooth transmitter. Um, so I've got these Sennheiser Momentum 2 wireless Bluetooth headphones. So let's go ahead and see how easy that is to hook up. Let's go to audio output, because obviously right now it's speaker out. So let's do Bluetooth receiver connect. 
All right, so let's put these in pairing mode. There we go. There we go. Momentum, boop, connected. Okay, so anything that I play through the whim should be sent to the headphones. All right, so just out of curiosity, I wanted to see how far I could go, what the Bluetooth range is when it is sending a Bluetooth signal out to headphones. So I walked outside and I probably got about, oh, I don't know, 50 yards. Yeah, maybe 50 yards away when it started to cut out. But what's interesting is that when it cut out, then I started to come back because obviously I couldn't go any further. You know, it's it's kind of sputtering. It's and then a little bit of distortion and static. But what was weird is that it didn't recover. So I came back into the house and I went right next to the amp. So I'm like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> Because normally if I just have my Bluetooth headphones on and I set my phone down and I walk away from my phone, if I get out of its range, obviously there's some distortion that it just, the audio just kind of cuts out. But if I walk back into its range, then it resumes as if I hadn't gone out of range at all. But this time I, it just kept being weird. Like it, the, the audio never recovered. So I ended up turning the headphones off power cycled them, I power cycled the amp, and then I attempted to reconnect to Bluetooth and have it transmit from the WIM amp to my headphones. And then it just decided it didn't really wanna do it anymore. Every time I pressed play, it was this really staticky, gross <laughs> music, and then it would cut off automatically, like just one second of audio and then it would just shut off. I assume it's just kind of a kill switch because it realizes the signal's not that great. So then it's just like, I'm not gonna attempt this. But it was weird because I had audio, but now it just decided it didn't wanna transmit Bluetooth at all. So I think that's just the case with transmitting Bluetooth when the source of it is coming from my phone. So I think it, it got a little confused how the input was over Wi-Fi, but then the output was streaming over Bluetooth. I think that kind of messed things up a bit internally. So typically if I'm gonna be listening to music over Bluetooth, I'm just gonna pair my headphones straight to my phone because that's usually where I'm gonna be playing music from. So my guess is if you're gonna be using Bluetooth transmission from the WIM amp, uh, it's more like maybe you've got a record player hooked up to it, and then you want to transmit that uh, around because maybe you're walking around the house or something. So you don't have to be stationary listening to this record, uh, which is really cool, by the way, having a stationary record player beaming that over Bluetooth so you can walk around and do whatever you want. Um, the other scenario I can think of is if you're watching TV, you've got it hooked up to the HDMI or the optical in and say you need to go to the bathroom or you're gonna to go to the kitchen or somewhere out of the room real quick and then come back. As long as you don't go outside of the Bluetooth range, then you should be good. So I, I can see that that's probably the scenarios you're actually gonna to wanna to use Bluetooth transmission. Otherwise, just stick to pairing your phone directly to the headphones. <laughs> All right, so who is this product for? This is for those who want an all-in-one hi-fi not just hi-fi, just an all-in-one entertainment system, especially now because this one supports HDMI. So that's why I say it's not just an introduction to hi-fi. It is hi-fi in a sense that it's only 2.1, but it also is an all-in-one entertainment hub because you can hook it up to your television. At 60 watts per channel though, this is definitely going to be for those speakers that are in the budget range and middle tier range, you could say. But despite having an ESS Sabre DAC inside of it, I could definitely hear some limitations with the amplified signal. Did it sound absolutely disgusting and I never want to hear it again? No, it sounded great. But if you're going to be listening to a playlist of music, they've been your favorite songs for decades. You know, every little nuance and every little detail in that song. As soon as you start to crank up the volume, that's when you're going to notice the limitations that the WIM amp has, despite its incredible DAC. With that being said though, you are not going to find another all-in-one streaming, Bluetooth receiving and transmitting, compatible with voice assistance, HDMI support with ARC, with CEC commands, with a subwoofer output, with loads of EQ presets, including base management in the WIM Home app for only $299. I believe the closest thing you can get that has the same features is the Blue Sound node. 
And that's twice the price. Not too long ago, I reviewed the Arcam A25 amp, as well as the ST5 streamer that they also came out with. That particular one has a Class G amplifier in it and can handle 150 watts RMS. That was an incredible sounding amp and streamer combo. But that combination is gonna set you back over $2,000. So with all those features packed into this little device the size of a Mac mini for only $299, come on. Yes, in the end you get what you pay for, but that $299 goes a long way. So would I recommend the WIM amp for, let's say an all-in-one entertainment solution for a fairly large living room? Probably not, just because of the limitations of the amp itself. But even in that scenario, it could still be a good starter kit. If say you're still listening to your TV speakers and you just want something better, maybe you go out and purchase a decent pair of bookshelf speakers and a little subwoofer because you just wanna have a little bit more oomph and a little bit more of a cinematic experience when you're watching television. Sure, this could be an amazing jumping off point. If that were the case though, where you do actually use it in a living room setting, I do wish that maybe in a future version of this, maybe a, a WIM Amp Plus, just like they have the WIM Pro Plus, maybe a WIM Amp Plus would also have more outputs. Because with the WIM Amp, you are forced to use only its speaker outputs with the exception of Bluetooth transmission. So say you did start with a modest 2.1 setup with the WIM amp as the hub, but then you decided you wanted to upgrade your bookshelf speakers and your sub, and those bookshelf speakers happen to need more power, it would be really nice to not have to get something else, but to continue to use your WIM amp because of all the other amazing features in it. I wish it had a pair of RCA analog pre-outs, so that way if you utilize the RCA pre-outs, you can connect a more powerful amp. But that's only talking about an all-in-one living room solution. In its current state, the WIM amp would be a perfect like office or desktop amp solution. Basically a situation where you're gonna be closer to the speakers. Or perhaps if you want just a modest 2.1 setup in your bedroom, or if you have a quiet study or library and you wanna have some music in there. For those kind of situations, the WIM amp is more than enough. But since the WIM amp is part of the WIM family of products, you can also have other WIM products around your house that this can, they can all just kind of communicate with each other, easily creating whole home audio, being able to play different music in each of those spots, or perhaps playing the same music all over the house at once. In fact, with that being said, a friend of mine actually just reached out to me uh, last month and she asked me, the most cost-effective way to have whole home audio because she currently has a receiver in her living room, but she wanted to just be able to have music go all throughout her house or in specific rooms that she wanted without having to pay thousands of dollars and pay somebody to, you know, snake speaker wire all around the house. So I gave her a couple examples and then we kind of narrowed it down. And then finally she decided to go with a whim system because it was, definitely the most cost effective. And it just works because they all just communicate with each other so well. She has a WIM Pro that's hooked up to a Bluetooth speaker in her bedroom. She has a WIM Pro that's hooked up to a couple of bookshelf speakers out on the back patio. And then she also has a WIM Pro in her living room connected to her receiver. So even though I wasn't exactly just blown away by the performance of the WIM amp specifically, I'm still a huge fan of WIM because they have somehow figured out to have these incredible features packed into such small footprints and yet have it priced way below its competitors. I just don't know how they do it, but I'm here for it. <laughs> so yes, if it did have a pair of RCA pre-outs, I would honestly say that it would be the perfect product because that way you can use more power if you need it while still utilizing the incredible DAC that's inside of the WIM amp. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> While the WIM amp is not perfect, it is still the best bargain you can possibly get, coming in at half the price that the closest competitor is priced at. And now it's your turn. 
So tell me, would you start with the Wim Amp as your entertainment hub in your living room if you were just going beyond your TV speakers? Would you rather use this in an office or bedroom setting? Do you already own other WIM products and you just want to add the WIM amp because you can think of a perfect place to put it? Let's start a conversation in the comments below, people. As always, this world is crazy as it is already, so please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them through the WIM amp. And of course, always be listening.